Hey, so this one, food habits, nutrition habits, I don't know the right name for it, but the real kicker is why does it have to be so hard? So food, you, you gotta eat it, right? And it's around you all the time and your tongue has got taste buds and things taste good to you, right? So a lot of times we, we enter into this idea of I'm gonna eat better and you change everything and it doesn't work because changing everything never works. Also, if you do some diet where it's calorie restrictive and you lose a bunch of weight real quick, you just gain it back plus some once you stop. So here's the thing. Yep, it's hard. Everything that's worth something is hard. Sometimes even if you don't want it, it's hard. So being rich and wealthy, it's, it's hard. Being poor, I mean, that's hard too. Doing like college and school and working at it is, is hard. Not doing it, I mean, you end up with a hard life, right? That's hard. Being healthy is hard. Being unhealthy, I mean, that's hard. Being married is hard. Being divorced is hard. Being um, uh, obese is hard. Being uh, conscious of what you eat and fit that way with food, man, that's hard. So choose your hard. Yep, uh, plain and simple is hard. But there are ways to get around or to make that hard uh, work for you. And really that's around changing your habits. So it takes, they say, roughly 30 days to create a habit, probably a little bit longer to break a bad habit. Hey, Damon. And, um, uh, hey, Damon, hey, it's been a long time. Uh, just saw it pop up, but it, um, anyway. Um, so the habits that you have and that you want to edit or create that's where it all comes from. So at the gym, uh, CrossFit Garage, we do nutrition-based, um, uh, or nutrition-based, <laughs> we do habit-based nutrition mentoring to help people fixing those habits. So there's simple things. Let, let's first talk about what a habit is. Um, and it's essentially, if you read uh, Atomic Habit, Power of Habit, or uh, uh, Power of Habit, one of those books, I think it's Atomic Habit, they talk about there's a cue, there's a ritual, and there's a reward. So you want to fix those things. You, you have to attack one of those three places in order to really start um, creating, editing a habit. So the other day we went to the Tullus Museum and I talked to a couple of other parent chaperones up there and um, the school had purchased Chick-fil-A for all the kids and one of the parents made a comment, hey, time to, time to eat our sodium bomb. And I pulled out my uh, uh, peanut butter packet and I said, yeah, I'm gonna eat this instead and then I will go get something on the way home. And they're like, ooh, well, what is that? So um, it's just habits, right? So I know that when I get hungry, I should probably have something around so that I go, don't go and do something stupid. I choose these guys right here because it fits, in, well, this is a big pack of them, but it fits in your pocket and peanut butter in your pocket will stay warm and therefore it's easier to eat. So kind of gross, I guess, but um, harken back to the days of, uh, what was that, um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. <laughs> And that girl gives the uh, uh, gummy bears to the principal. She's like, they're warm. They've been in my pocket all day. But anyway, so that's a habit. What a, a good habit is, hey, the, I have uh, cell phone wallet keys and a pack of peanut butter. It all goes in my pocket. That's just what I do. It's a new habit. The cue is, hey, I'm getting ready to go. My habit is I grab all these things. Uh, or, or sorry, the ritual is I grab all these things. And the reward is when I'm hungry, I, I don't have to go stop at fast food. So typically what I say a good habit also is, not I, but they, is if you can pull up and drive through to pick it up to eat it, it's really not food, it's entertainment. So there's nothing wrong with eating a chicken, egg, and cheese biscuit. Make it yourself. So eat the stuff you like, make it yourself. All right, so other habits, things that you could do. So the big one that came up with the parents that I was talking to is, yeah, at night, everyone's down, it's finally me time, and I'm like, I want that, I want that thing, I want the piece of chocolate, I want the ice bowl of ice cream, right? Okay, so the cue is the house is settled down, the ritual is I go get my ice cream, the reward is the taste of my taste buds, like ooh, it's so good, right? So how do you break that? The ritual, so first, write things down. You, you take a notebook and you start logging what you feel and when and how and what you're thinking. So is the cue really, everybody's down, it's, it's nighttime, it's sleepy, right? So. You're never really going to fix that cue. Everyone's going to go to bed. So that cue is there to stay. Now, it could be it has nothing to do with that. It's when I turn the TV on, then I get, 
Okay, so stop turning your TV on. Go ahead and fix the cue ahead of time. But if the cue is something that you can't fix, then you look at the ritual. So the ritual is, um, then I'm gonna go get my ice cream. So let's change the ritual. The ritual now is, I'm gonna eat a pickle, right? So I find vinegar and that, uh, that um, uh, the dill taste or an olive uh, really messes up that desire in your, you're like, eh, I don't know, it changes what's in my mouth, right? Or brush your teeth. That's a good one. Get out of like, hey, everyone's down. Now what I do is I go brush my teeth and I go to bed. So you change the cue or figure out what that is. Don't sit, don't sit down in front of the TV. Instead, um, go read a book or something different. Come up with something and see if that still triggers the same cue or that cue still triggers the same uh, ritual. If you can't fix that, then fix the ritual. Okay, I ate a pickle, I ate an olive, I brushed my teeth, I went to bed. So that the reward is something different, right? So it's hard to, um, I guess, it's hard to fix the reward because the sugar on your tongue, the reward is the pleasant feeling, right? So you eat a pickle and you're changing the reward, but you're changing the ritual too. So <clears throat> that's a good way to look at it. Other things, when I wake up in the morning, um, let's think of another good one that people have a problem with. Um, when I go out to eat, I feel like I paid for it. I got to eat everything. Okay, so why? Write down some stuff about why you feel that way. Try saving it, right? Are you actually that much uh, hungrier? Or is it just I don't want to waste food? Or, you know, figure out what it is. So the cue is I went out to eat. I could just take that away. And I'll never go out to eat again. Kind of tough. So the cue is I'm out to eat. The ritual is... Um, I eat everything and the reward is, well, it's not a reward, it's bad. So the negative reward is I feel, right? So write that down too. Next time you go out to eat, cut it in half, put it in the box ahead of time. Hey, thanks for the hamburger and fries, whatever you're getting. Um, and can I have a box right now? Um, or can you cut it in half and put half of it in a box for me, right? So now on your plate, it's only half the food. So now I'm changing that cueing is, it's, or I'm changing the ritual, right? I'm eating it all, but it's actually only half. And then the negative reward, how do I feel? I've got the food at home. Can I reward it? Can I eat that? So <clears throat> instead of trying to go the other way, which is calorie counting, which does work, there's a lot of math. There's a lot of ways to fix your food, your relationship with food. Um, I think the hardest one is calories in, calories out. And yeah, that is a good science. Um, I eat 5,000 calories, I burn 5,001, therefore I am on a deficit. I'm gonna lose weight over time. Yeah, sure. But I think the thing that they miss is not all food is created equal, and sometimes food actually isn't food, it's entertainment. So if I got a Happy Meal, that's, that's not food, that's entertainment. Sure, everyone should go get entertained every once in a while. I don't, because I just think that's just disgusting. But um, not all food's created equal. So. I eat a ton of, uh, I eat a lot of uh, fats and a lot of vegetables and I never eat grains on purpose and I don't eat sugar. So I have found that the science of calories in, calorie outs doesn't really work. Um, it changes based on what you're eating. So I don't have the, the grain or the sugar inside of me working against this other food and I'm able to process food differently so that I mean, if you go out and eat with me, you're like, dang, man, are you really going to eat all that? I'm like, yep, and I might eat some more um, because it doesn't process the same. So calories in, calories out actually doesn't really work. Um, I also try to eat something healthier even though it costs more. So if they've got like one of my favorite restaurants in Woodstock or Woodstock-ish is a Gustans or Gaston's or Gustin's. I don't know how you say it, but it used to be a biker bar um, over um, uh, 92 in Trigham. And they don't have it named the Andy, but I get it a lot. So uh, it's a bison burger with a full garden um, with uh, uh, two cheddar cheeses, an over easy egg, and avocado, sweet potato fries, no cinnamon or sugar. They know it. When I walk in, you're, they say, are you getting the Andy, right? So, hey, Carol. And um, that's my sister, Carol. She owns a CrossFit gym in Plant City, and her daughter, Reagan, is going to coach for us as she flies to California. She's here, coach for us Wednesday night. It's crazy. Um... CrossFit's in the family. So in my uh, other, another sister, little sister Vivian, she CrossFit's and coaches down at uh, CrossFit Tucker. Crazy stuff. But um, anyway, so those habits are uh, what you're looking at, what you're trying to change. So I eat a lot of this different type of food. So the calorie in, calorie out doesn't really work for me. Um, that If you weighed it and measured it, you'd be like, that's insane. It doesn't work. I also do work out almost every day. 
I would say four days a week is my norm, but I'm also pretty active, so coaching soccer. Of course, if you ask my soccer girls, is coach active? They're gonna be like, no, he does nothing. So I have the policy of if I'm touching the ball, then I failed as a coach. Just like if I'm in the gym coaching, if I'm lifting your bar, it's not, I mean, you should be lifting the bar, right? So I may demo a move, but usually I pull somebody out to have them demo it so that I can do points of performance. So even in soccer, hey, um, I throw kids on the cone and say, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Every once in a while I'll get in there to uh, demonstrate, but man, I never really touch the ball because I'm a coach, I'm not the player. So I want them to work on that. But <clears throat> anyway, habit. Not really that hard. It's kind of a easy way to get this heavy lifting out of the way, but it does take time. Now, here's the thing. You fix a habit, you're not gonna see results immediately, and that's great. I know you're like, whoa, I want immediate results. No, you don't. If you get immediate results, they're gonna have immediate failures once you're done, and it's gonna go over. It always does. You wanna learn to do something that loses one pound a month. That's it. After a year, you've lost 12 pounds. Who wouldn't like to say I lost 12 pounds? Most everyone's like, yes, except for Aaron. Aaron's like, I'm trying to gain weight. So um, uh, he and I both, uh, I love the swole 60. He loves that too because we want small guys to be able to grow. So us older people should not do the swole 60, but kids should. So if you're trying to lose weight, 12 pounds in a year, great. Keep doing that. In two years, that's 24 pounds. Who does, right? Who doesn't want to, most people want to see it. Fast, fast is horrible. It's bad for your body. I, I literally can have you lose 20 pounds in a day. I was a wrestler. I know what to do. You may die. And so the answer, it, it's funny. I told this one lady, I, I don't do our no sweat intros anymore. Coach Jamie does because I'm a fool. But so one lady came in and she's like, so I want to lose 20 pounds. And I'm like, great. Well, how, what do you, what's your time frame? She's like, a week. I'm like, well, I can have you lose 20 pounds in a day, but you might die. And she's like, great, let's do it. I'm like, no, 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 no. That was supposed to be a no. That was like a, a deselling point. Don't do it. Um, so that is horrible. I've seen kids mess themselves up big time doing things like that for the sake of wrestling because it matters so much and I need to make weight and I need to make that play. I need to break my arm on collarbone because uh, I do love sports, but don't ruin your body over it. So anyway, back to the habits. Q, ritual, reward. Find where your cues are. Log, write some stuff down. Grab your phone. Oh, my phone's right here. So grab your phone. Just talk to yourself in there. Text yourself or, te or email yourself. Hey, I'm about to eat. This is how I'm feeling. This is what I'm thinking. Read the book. It's a great book. Re uh, I, I don't really read. Get it on Audible and let it talk to you. But understand the process behind it. Better than that or easier than that is to hire a coach. You guys, you know, I always say this. Having a coach speeds everything up. Um, CrossFit Garage, we do nutrition, uh, habits-based nutrition, uh, mentoring, coaching. So it's mentoring, coaching, and accountability, right? Write stuff down and track it is great, but building habits that last a long time are greater, better, gooder. Let's just go with gooder. So that's, that's really what you want to be looking at. Hey, Gabriella is fixing those habits. How do you do that? Man, get the book. It's easy. Listen to it. Read it. Start tracking your own habits. If you have a hard time, the internet has information. It's free. Get it. If you want help, get a coach. Where do you find a coach? Man, pretty much anywhere. If you don't know where to find a coach and you're not, well, actually for nutrition habits, you don't need to be local. We can do this anywhere. But I would say it's probably better if you can meet somebody in person. Um, I, I just like in person. I know the world has moved kind of the virtual, but I don't have a rotary dial phone. So I'm not that guy. But I think in-person has a place probably forever. So I'd go in-person. I'd find somebody you could talk to face-to-face. Um, -face. I think those emotions come out. The things that are really on your chest really come out when, when you can talk. I, I'd also say if you're a girl, find a girl. If you're a guy, find a guy or a girl. It doesn't matter. But I have done this for years in a man talking to a lady about her issues it doesn't really work. There's always something that they feel like they need to hold back and you don't want to hold back. You want to let it out. You want to, you want to let it go. We just watched Frozen the play. So what else can I tell you on habits? Um, <clears throat> I think a great habit also is before you go eat, if you're going to go eat with your friends out to eat, eat something. So these peanut butter packs, they've got too much fat for most people, but again, I don't eat uh, sugar or grain. So, uh, the fat uh, doesn't bother me anyway, like the cold. And, um, uh, so <laughs> really bad jokes there. Uh, 
So if I'm gonna go out to eat, I don't do this, but if I was gonna go out to eat and I wanted to eat less, I would eat beforehand. So your stomach uh, and your brain are about 15 minutes apart in communication. So your stomach's gonna be full and then tell your brain 15 minutes after the fact. So eat your food slow or pre-eat. Hey, we're about to go eat. <laughs> eat that peanut butter pack. When you get there, hey, I'm gonna order this, the Andy, but could you split it in half and put it in a box for me? And then you're oddly, you're gonna be like, really wasn't that hungry because you already ate a little bit, right? Another great habit is drink lots of water, whether you like, so, all right, I have found a cue for myself. I like to buy um, uh, uh, tea if I'm gonna drink it. I don't usually drink coffee, but I'll go for coffee if they don't have my tea. So I really like Starbucks um, Tavana or something like that, but it's a Royal English breakfast tea. And it's not that I really want the tea, it's I like the, I've got something that I'm drinking that I'm kind of treating myself. So weirdly, the cue was, I just like to have that treat. Well, my, my wife goes to Costco's and buys this guy right here. I didn't even really know much about it, but it looks like a treat. It says um, alkaline water, so it's pH balanced, I guess. I don't even know really. <laughs> I mean, I know, I'm an engineer. I know what that means, but really? It's okay, whatever. So it's not an acid. It's, it's a base. It's an alkaline. So I'm drinking that puppy, right? Um, it's a treat. And weirdly, it's water. That's it. But it's a treat. And I find that fits my ritual or the reward, right? So the cue is I want a treat. The ritual is now I'm just drinking water, but I still have the reward. It was something special for me. I, and you're like, well, how does that, it's not even the same thing. It is because you're understanding the cue. The cue is not, I need Starbucks, I need the caffeine fix. It's, I, I wanted the ritual. I tried other things. So how did I get there? So I said, well, let me buy something different. And, and it turned out it wasn't the tea that I wanted. It was just something that was a treat. I've been working hard. I did something. I coached. I had whatever. And I wanted something, right? And yeah, I know you're thinking, really? You treat yourself with water? Um, uh, if Carol's still watching this, she'll uh, like this story. Uh, a long, long time ago, one of her kids, I don't remember which one it was, started treating herself with hot water. So <laughs> her treat was they would warm up to warm up water in the microwave and drink hot water. And I thought, that's crazy. I have actually done that when I felt like I wanted tea. I just drank hot water and found the cue that I needed was I just wanted something warm in my mouth. It didn't have to be the tea, which I know you're thinking tea really isn't that bad. And it's just straight tea. No, but sometimes I feel like I get addicted to things I want to, or I may be addicted and I hate the idea of dependency. So sugar is, that's why I don't eat that. I feel like I was a slave to it. I really wanted to eat my sugar. Um, tea, I felt like, well, is it the caffeine? Is that what I'm really wanting? So I try to get myself out of that and see if I could. If I could, then I'm like, okay, well, it's not that. You understand those cues, edit the ritual, and figure out, does it give me the same reward? So that's the secret to success, is understanding your habit loop. Um, read the book, get a mentor, give me a text, phone call, uh, throw, don't really throw a rock, but I'm happy to help. I had several of my soccer parents actually ask, Ooh, what is this habit-based nutrition? I love it. Love talking about this stuff. All right. If you have questions, let me know. That's it.